When it comes to KPI dashboards, there's no one-size-fits-all solution. The best dashboard designs are unique to you and your situation. So if you've decided you need a KPI dashboard for your business, but you aren't sure what to include, then stick around because today we're going to review five different types of KPI dashboards used by real companies. By the end of this video, you're going to have a better understanding of what types of dashboard to use in different situations and be more confident designing the right KPI dashboard for your own business. Dashboard example number one, the scorecard. A scorecard is probably the simplest type of KPI dashboard that you can create for your business. There's no great science to it. You simply pick the five to 10 KPIs which are most important for monitoring the health and performance of your business, and then you track them at regular intervals, either daily or weekly. The metrics you choose to track can come from any part of the business, be that sales, marketing, finance, operations, or somewhere else. The only thing they have in common is that you've deemed them to be strategically important. In other words, if they change, you'll want to know about it. Sometimes these dashboards are referred to as pulse dashboards because they're designed to help you keep your fingers on the pulse of the business. So as we can see, this dashboard is tracking metrics from all around the business. The CEO has decided to choose marketing metrics. Um, so we've got some website visitors, we've got the number of MQLs being generated from the website. Um, they're also tracking sales metrics, so the number of sales calls which are happening each week, as well as the number of deals which are being closed, the number of in installations which are happening of the product, um, as well as the billings, um, how much billings we've taken each week. So this reports every week, though you could report every day. Um, this cadence seems to work for this business owner. And as we mentioned, it's really good at just helping to keep your finger and the pulse of the business. So these are the key performance indicators. If any of these changed, or started performing worse than we'd want to know about it. And we can see with the comparisons with previous weeks, as well as the trend line, whether anything is unusual or needs further attention. The benefit of a scorecard is that it can really cut through the noise and help you just focus on the metrics that matter. It also highlights and signals to the rest of the team the metrics that you care about. And this is really helpful for keeping everybody on the same page and aligned as the company grows. Dashboard example number two, the time saver. Sometimes the purpose of a dashboard is simply to save some time in your busy day. This is an example of how an e-commerce dashboard can really save you a lot of time. Um, so this dashboard is not only pulling metrics from different sources, it's also pulling metrics from different accounts within those sources. So we have two separate Shopify accounts, which we're pulling data from and showing on one dashboard, two separate Google Ads accounts, which we're pulling metrics from and showing on one dashboard, and similarly for our newsletter, um, from our email marketing platform and Google Analytics where we have two websites set up so we can monitor how the different stores are performing. Now it would ordinarily take a little bit of time to log into each one of these platforms so what this business owner has done is taken all the metrics they care about from all the different data sources and all the different online stores they have and put it into one dashboard where they can view those metrics side by side so rather than a task which would normally take several logins this is something they can simply glance at and get all of the key information that they need now this is all data which is available in those platforms, but if you're a busy business owner who wants to keep constant tabs on the business, then you're just going to find it frustrating to have to log into these platforms several times a day. It's also not ideal if you've got team members who spend hours each week on manual reporting tasks. Automating this process using a KPI dashboard is going to save you a lot of time, particularly if you can then display that dashboard on a TV screen on the wall, where it's always going to be readily available. Dashboard example number three, the real-time dashboard. Some systems and processes move so quickly, you need to monitor them in the moment. This is where a real-time dashboard can be really helpful. Let's take a look at a dashboard used by a customer service team, which pulls through real-time Zendesk data. So this dashboard shows how the team is performing overall by tracking metrics like first response time and full resolution time. If one of these metrics ever rises above a certain threshold, then a status indicator will trigger notifying the team so that they can take action. It also shows a breakdown of tickets which require further attention. This is particularly useful if your support team has service level agreements which you need to hit within a certain time frame. 
We can also see how many tickets are unassigned, including how many tickets are assigned to each agent. This is particularly helpful if you need to manage your workforce and move people around to meet demand. Real-time dashboards like this are particularly important if you need to monitor fast-moving processes. However, beware that not all dashboard solutions auto-refresh in real-time. You should always check what refresh rates are supported for the different data sources. Dashboard example number four, the competition dashboard. Motivating your team can be hard because different team members respond to different motivational techniques. A competition dashboard can be a great way of keeping your team engaged around the targets and KPIs. So this dashboard is an example of a sales competition dashboard. So this is a dashboard which is largely being fed by Salesforce data. Um, in the left hand corner, we've got the overall team performance um, and how we're performing against our targets. We've got a leaderboard which shows you know, how agents are performing in relation to one another. And we've also broken down the sales reps performance um, individually. So we can see how they're performing this year against their own individual targets. And we can see how they're performing this week and the overall trend line as well. So this is a great way of engaging your sales teams, building a sense of friendly competition, um, and keeping KPIs and metrics front and center at the heart of the team culture. It's worth saying that a dashboard doesn't have to be structured in the form of a leaderboard to have a motivating effect. The simple act of highlighting and sharing KPIs can be really beneficial in helping team members take accountability and ownership for their own performance. Dashboard example number five, the activity dashboard. KPI dashboards don't always have to focus on output metrics and end results like revenue or deals won. By focusing on input metrics, you can really help build momentum. In his book, Atomic Habits, James Clear tells the story of a stockbroker who would start each day with 120 paperclips in a jar. Every time that stockbroker made a call, he would take one paperclip and put it into a second jar, and he wouldn't leave for the day until he'd moved every single paperclip from one jar to the next. The day after, he'd start again with 120 paperclips in a jar. 18 months later, that stockbroker was bringing in $5 million to the firm. The point is that sometimes it's actually better to focus on input and momentum rather than getting fixated on the end results, which can cause us to overthink things. This sales activity dashboard is great for doing just that. It doesn't just focus on revenue down here in the form of new customers, revenue and win rates. It also focuses on activity and input metrics, like the amount of calls being booked, emails being sent, social impressions from our social media campaigns, the number of calls were taking place, and the average duration of those calls. Now, this can really help to keep up the momentum, especially when tasks can start to feel dull or repetitive. It's a great way of saying to the team that the amount of input we put in is really gonna pay off eventually. So keep the focus up, keep the momentum up, let's keep motivated, let's stay engaged. And that's a great way of focusing your team on the things that matter, such as input metrics in achieving your overall targets and goals. So there we go, five different dashboard examples covering five very different use cases. If you'd like to view more dashboard examples, then just head over to geckoboard.com and there we've got over 70 different dashboard examples used by real companies. And if you'd like to build your own dashboard, then why not check out Geckoboard? Geckoboard has a 14 day free trial. We connect with over 90 different data sources and um, you'll be up and running with your first dashboard in a matter of minutes. It's very easy to use. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please drop us a like and subscribe. If you have any questions at all, just leave those in comments and I'll get back to you. And otherwise, I hope you have a great day.